Ashley with Baking with the Bakers. Yes, we changed our name. Um, but today we are actually going to make blonde gingerbread cookies. Now, what's the difference between regular gingerbread and blonde gingerbread? Well, the blonde gingerbread, um, instead of molasses, you use light corn syrup or golden honey. Um, I have light corn syrup on hand. And instead of brown sugar, which is delicious, you use white sugar instead. So that's the difference. Um, but the technique is pretty much the same. So um, what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and measure out um, all of our ingredients. And I will be right back with you. <laughs> Ember is helping us today and she accidentally put the sugar in with the butter which during a lot of recipes you go on and put the sugar in with the butter but we actually wanted our light corn syrup in with the butter and not the sugar this time so we're gonna kind of wing it we're gonna try and get everything evened out but we've got uh, one quarter cup of butter in there so that's half a stick um, right now there's a half a cup of sug white sugar in there, uh, which is not supposed to be in there yet. It's supposed to go with the other dry ingredients, like the flour and the seasonings. Um, but we are going to put a half cup of our light corn syrup into this, cream it together, and also we're going to add the, uh, the vanilla butternut extract or flavoring that Miss Ember has. So, all right, so in here, again, we have one quarter cup Every or one flour. half stick yeah, of our good. butter. We have one teaspoon of vanilla butternut flavoring. That we have sugar. one half cup of sugar. Mm. And we have one half cup of light corn syrup. So we are going to um, put up our mixer. Start out on just a stir. We are going to increase it to about medium high, or sorry, medium low speed. Finally got that piece of butter off. All in all, I think that creamed together nicely. So in this little uh, cup we have here, we have one teaspoon of baking soda, one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of ginger, one half teaspoon of salt. Now we are going to actually add that into As our usual, three and a half cups of flour. Cups. I've had our... And uh, we are going to sift that together so that there are no lumps in it. So. Miss Ember will most likely try to help with the sifting, so things could get a little bit messy. Or her sister could make a mess, which is what we just heard in the living room. So we'll be right back. Here's Ember demonstrating how to use a hand sifter. She's actually doing a really good job of it. And mommy's probably gonna get the rest, that little bit at the bottom. It's always a little tricky. That's uh, yellow. Yellow, is it bright yellow? Yep. All right, so we are going to uh, start the mixer back up. And what we will do now that our flour sifted together nicely, you can see the spices in it and it looks just great. Um, we are going to stir this mix back up until it gets a little bit uh, whipped. And then we're going to slowly add um, like little cupfuls of this uh, flour mixture in, followed by a little bit of warm water. 
So I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, it's looking pretty lit, so we're going to slow it back down to about a stir. Add in our flour. Let it work at about a two or a four until it gets nice and combined. water at a time more and make sure the water is warm okay we'll see you in a bit and this is what your dough should look like once it is uh, nice and come together and has enough moisture now today is really cold and it's not very humid outside so we actually had to add almost a whole um, or, or I mean almost a quarter cup more of water and we have our trusty little spatula out that we can pull this off of the the whisk with but you can just see all the spices down in there and it smells lovely now the thing about um, gingerbread is that much like sugar cookies they have to chill for a while so what we're gonna do you hear that snick and you see the moisture to the touch yeah you don't want it soggy you want it just just moist but what we're going to do is we are going to divide the dough in half and then each half will be put into um, some plastic wrap and flattened out to a, about a disc shape you know roughly pat it out and it has to chill for at least three hours which is longer than sugar cookies for sure <laughs> and embers playing with the dough but I'll show you guys what it looks like once we have our dough wrapped up and ready to chill. Say hi. 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 <laughs> Alright, so I actually went ahead and put the dough in the refrigerator. It's wrapped up and it's in its little disc shape. I forgot to show you guys that. Sorry, somebody was being rude with her food, so I had to cut her out. <laughs> um, but... You'll see what shape I'm talking about putting the dough in once we get it out to roll out and start cutting. So this is Alice and we'll see you all in about another two and a half hours. <laughs> we might have taken a nap and overslept and the dough has been chilling for five hours now. Uh, these things happen but uh, we're about to get that out. We've already preheated our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And what we did also um, off camera 
was we took two baking sheets. We might need more than that, but so far we have two baking sheets lined with parchment paper and sprayed with nonstick spray. Uh, again, I use vegetable oil based nonstick spray. It's just whatever's cheapest, that's what I use. But my little helper is eating pudding, so in just a moment we'll get to rolling out the dough and using our Christmas shaped cookie cutters that my brother got me. Thanks so much. And uh, you'll see how it goes. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so we floured our surface and our hands. We've got one of our two dough uh, discs out of the fridge, and we are going to roll this out to a quarter inch. So we still got some rolling to do. So let's unwrap this puppy and get it rolled out. All right, our rolling pin is also floured, and Amber is going to try her best to roll out this hard dough, but I think I need to give her a little help. So just a moment <laughs> all right we got it rolled out to a quarter inch in thickness it's actually really hard because the dough is so thick I got it I got it <laughs> and of course uh, what would gingerbread be without a classic gingerbread man <laughs> so uh, we're gonna, gonna push this down a little harder because uh, somebody got a little little excited and started without me. But around this time is when we uh, start making our Christmas cookies and stuff. It's still a few weeks out, but it's just, it's such a nice thing to do with kiddos, you know? You definitely want to do the little wiggle back and forth with this dough because it is just, it's thick. And while there isn't any egg in this dough, so it's technically safe to eat, um, I wouldn't recommend it just because the, um, the ginger in particular is really overwhelming just naked on the tongue without being, um, without being cooked. So hopefully the cooked cookies don't have that issue. You wanna do a different one? Here, let's do... The tree fits right there, doesn't it? Push, push, push. Yeah. Okay, let mommy do it. Let mommy do it for you. Gotta line it back up. Yeah. And wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six gingerbread men and a tree out of just one disc and that's without even re-rolling it so that's not a bad uh, it's not a bad turnout so we're going to pull off the extra dough set it to the side carefully do we more Now, see, here's the reason you really want to have lots of flour down because these guys will stick to your table or whatever it is that you're, you're uh, rolling out on. And again, you're going to place these about an inch apart. They shouldn't spread too much. So we'll get about eight cookies per pan. See that guy's head tore a little bit. Okay. We've got room for one more, so we'll, what we'll do is we will re-roll our dough, and um, what we're gonna do is go ahead and get everything cut out, and then we'll put them in the oven and let them bake anywhere from eight to 11 minutes. Um, I'll check back in with you on how long these go, okay? Oh, out of this uh, one disc, we got a total of 14 cookies. So we're about to put those in the oven and see how long they need to go. Okay, so the general consensus is that it takes 11 minutes for these guys to cook all the way through. At 9 minutes, we were still really doughy in the center. Now, keep in mind though, 
at 11 minutes, some of them have very brown bottoms, while others don't. So what you'll need to do if you have an oven like mine then, with hot spots and uneven heating, is at the six and a half minute mark, just take the bottom uh, rack, or sorry, the bottom cookie sheet, and put it on the top rack, put the top one on the bottom rack. We got, um, I want to say 28, 30. We got 30 cookies out of um, the two discs of dough that was made from this recipe. A few of them have been sacrificed to children and to a husband who just wanted to know what it tastes like. And the taste is very good, don't get me wrong. The, the warmth of the ginger and the cinnamon just kind of hugs you and makes you feel like, like Christmas. But these are not super sweet cookies. These are cookies that are meant to be iced. So let's follow along for our next video, which I will link in the description or put in the video if I learn how to do that. <laughs> I'm still new. Um, but I'll show you guys how to make a royal icing substitute because royal icing just isn't my forte. But um, these did get really puffy. Even though they were rolled out to quarter inch, they end up being like a half inch once they puff up. Um, Ember cut one really, really thick that ended up being an inch tall, and it still actually cooked through in all but one spot. So um, you can, you got some leeway. But let's let these continue cooling while we get our icing on. <laughs> 